Good morning, my beautiful Teletubby Diamonds and my Hershey Kisses. Today is Tuesday. You see the party? Tuesday! Yay! Today is January 30th, and today we're going to focus on Daniel's chapter 3, verse 17 through 18. And here it says, If you throw us into the hot furnace, the God we serve can save us. And if he wants to, he can save us from your power. But even if God does not save us, we want you to know, King, that we refuse to serve your gods. We will not worship the gold idol you have set up. And to paraphrase that, we believe God is going to deliver us, but even if he does not, we are not conforming to your image of what you think we ought to be doing. We are going to do what God is telling us to do. You can do what you want to do with your furnace. But whatever happens to us, we will still have peace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to worship the golden idol that King Nebuchadnezzar constructed and as a result were thrown into the fiery furnace. <clears throat> These three young men had no idea what would happen to them, but they were willing to put their lives on the line instead of disobeying God. We need people today who will take a stand for righteousness, for what is right according to God's word. If this does not happen, our world will be in serious trouble. Many times people fail to stand up for righteousness because they are afraid of what will happen when they do. Will they lose their jobs? Will they lose their friends and their family? Will God abandon them? In situations such as these, when we do not know what the outcome or result of a situation will be, we need to trust in Jehovah God and Jesus Christ and press forward to do what they, what we believe is right. You got to do what you believe is right. Even if we are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, God's word says we are blessed. Matthew chapter 5 verse 10. Those three Hebrew boys would have never experienced their incredible miracle if they weren't willing to trust God as they stood in that fire. <clears throat> the world desperately needs men and women who will trust Jesus Christ, even in the midst of the fires of persecution and outside pressure. Jesus can put us in better places than people could ever put us if we trust in him and if we are people of integrity and excellence. We need people who will put everything on the line and say, even if I lose what I want, I will not compromise and do what I know in my heart to be wrong. We need to fear the Lord above all else and to trust him at all times in every situation, every day of our lives. Trust God to meet you in the fire. Don't be afraid to stand up for righteousness because you know he'll never leave you and he will never forsake you. And that's what I had to do when I was a Jehovah's Witness. I had to make a stand because they are guilty of idolatry bowing down to the tower. They call it the watchtower. They don't listen and follow Jesus Christ's teachings. They're so busy following whatever the governing body says. And that's why I had to fall. That's just one of the reasons I had to leave. <clears throat> but uh, them convincing people, having people reject Jesus' ransom sacrifice, not partaking of the emblems, Jesus made it very clear. If you do not eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, you will never be a part of me. And that organization have so many people blinded, actually rejecting Jesus' ransom sacrifice. They talk about people who believe in the Trinity, but that's way worse than any Trinity. So again, I had to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I had to make a stand for Jehovah and Jesus Christ. That's why I left. That's just one of the reasons, like I said. But anyway, it's time for our power thoughts. Are you ready, my beautiful Teletubby Diamond Hershey Kisses? 
Here we go. January 30th. Forgive and forget. Love keeps no record of being wronged. 1 Corinthians 13.5, New Living Translation. Most of us are guilty of keeping up-to-date records of all the offenses we have suffered, no matter how big or how small. But if we want joy to operate in our lives, we will have to learn how to forgive and forget. Forgetting is a choice. It's not that we are unable to remember, but we choose to remember the better things in life. If there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. Philippians 4, 8. God is telling you the things that will bring you joy. Nowhere does he say to remember what people have done to hurt your feelings or how they have been rude to you or how they did something you didn't want them to do. God wants you to forgive and forget and fill your mind with worthy things. Power thought. I am quick to forgive and forget. I keep no record of wrongs done to me. Wow, that was a heavy one. I know with me, it's so easy for me to forgive people, especially when I see that they're trying to do better. You know, uh, when they ask for forgiveness, you know, they say for a person to apologize and yet they don't change their behavior and their actions. That's a form of manipulation. And I understand that, but people also have to understand that some things, it's a process. Sometimes it takes a little longer to get your act straight because it takes time. But like I said, as long as I see a person is trying and they haven't given up, as long as they haven't given up, I'm not going to give up on them. Now, the forget part, whoo, that's hard. That's a hard one. Because, you know, right now I don't have Alzheimer's or dementia. So a lot of times I, I can't forget certain things. But what you do is you take the lesson from it. Like I remember certain things that happened to me and I take the lesson from it. And then I apply Philippians chapter three, verse 12 through 15, where it says, I don't mean that I am exactly what God wants me to be. I have not yet reached that goal, but I continue trying to reach it and make it mine. That's what Jesus Christ wants me to do. It is the reason he made me his. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, I know that I will have a long way to go, but there is one thing I do. This is what he says. I forget what is in the past and try as hard as I can to reach the goal set before me. I keep running hard towards the finish line to get the prize that is mine because God has called me through Jesus Christ to life up there in heaven. All of us who have grown to be spiritually mature should think this way too. And if there is any of, of this that you don't agree with, God will make it clear to you. So you have got to let go of the past and continue to run towards the prize, sweetheart. And hanging on to the past, uh-uh, that's not going to work. So anyway, it's time for your Bible trivia questions. Are you ready, my beautiful diamonds? Uh, who was taken out of Sodom before it was destroyed. Next. What was the name of the demon. Jesus removed from the man. And put into the pigs. Lastly. What has God promised to give. Liberally. If we ask him. All you got to do is. Add, I like that one. That's a good one. Yeah honey. Okay so for the first question. Who was taken out of Sodom. Before it was destroyed, you can find that at Genesis chapter 19, verse 15 and 16. And for the second one, what was the name of the demon Jesus removed from the man and put into the pigs? Luke chapter 8, verse 30. What has God promised to give liberally if we ask him? And that is found at James chapter 1, verse 5. I want you to have a good day. Jehovah loves you. Jesus loves you. And yes, Sheila loves you very much too. Now go out there and sparkle and shine.